I want to scream at the top of my lungs. But it's only two in the afternoon, so it doesn't really feel like the right time to do that. But, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This team, this Vancouver Canucks team has just defeated the Wild for a second straight win to take a 2-1 to series lead in Game 3 of their Stanley Cup Playoffs qualifying play-in series. And it's the first Canucks postseason shutout in nine years since Roberto Luongo in Game 5 in Vancouver against the Bruins. Oh man. We're breaking records here, boys. We're breaking records. The Canucks have won and one more. They need one more, one more win to advance to the actual playoffs and face off against either Dallas, Colorado, Vegas, or St. Louis in what would be the quote unquote first round. Now, I will say, even though this game was technically perfect because, hey, they got a 3-0 win, Markstrom gets a shutout, Petey gets a goal and an assist, Hughes gets two assists, Besser gets a goal on the same day where six years ago his friend, who used to don the number six on his hockey jersey, which is why Brock Besser wears that number today, unfortunately passed away in a car accident. It was poetic, it was crazy, and this team actually won. But man... There are a few things to talk about before we actually go forward with this. So, first off, the Vancouver Canucks got off to a pretty hot start. And we saw the hot start with Game 2, where Tanner Pearson got an immediate one towards the goal and it went in. But this one saw no goals, actually, at the very beginning of the game because... Staylock and Markstrom both doing their thing. Staylock honestly looking really good at the early stages of the game, but... It's just a whole bunch of penalties that end up coming out instead. Tyler Myers gets the start of this power play bonanza, holding against Eriksson Ek, then in the same play, it's Jordan Greenway tripping against Jake Vertanen, and for the most part, we saw some four-on-four four here and there. It was pretty nice to start off the game. But at the 10-minute mark of the first period, this is when I kind of get a little bit angsty, because Antoine Rousseau chasing the puck as it comes in behind the net, and Staylock is out, ends up running the Minnesota Wild goalie over, and I'm just like, okay, no, that's the first actual power play for the Wild in this game. And the Wild were like, what, 0-6 in Game 2? So you know this team is definitely going to come out here swinging on the PP, trying to get their chances, trying to get their goals, and trying to make up for that insufficient power play performance from Game 2. But they kill it off. The team kills it off, and eventually, they end up going on the power play soon after. Miko Koivu with a slashing penalty on Zach McEwen. The Zach attack, who made his debut here in the Stanley Cup postseason. And man, this Canucks power play got some pretty good movement. The first unit out there doing their thing. Lots of passing, no shooting, but lots of passing regardless. And it looks pretty good, just no shots. And eventually the second unit comes out. They try to do their thing. It doesn't really work out all too well, though. I will say that the first power play had a lot more interesting stuff going on. The second power play did have one chance on the rush, but that was kind of shut down. But that was about it. Eventually, though, we see more penalties. It's Sutter, it's Cunning, it's Eric Stahl. In the second period, we saw Ryan Hartman with a board against Elias Pettersson. That one was crazy because Pettersson was kind of getting the puck in the half boards area of the ice. He was kind of bent down forward, and Ryan Hartman, trying to get revenge for two days ago, comes in and bats Pettersson right into the boards. Head first, he kind of goes down. Then JT Miller comes out, drops the gloves, and they go in a little scrum. So the game's kind of picking up at this point. There are more penalties being called. Pedersen gets one a little bit later. An interference call on the power play against Felino. So it's four on four, even more. Jordan Greenway goes back to the box. Louis Erickson gets a penalty for interfering with Staylock. And in the third period, we saw some more Tyler Myers stuff going on. We saw Kevin Fiala penalties. That guy got so many penalties in the third period. It's not even funny. This guy was an absolute fireball out there in terms of the shots and the penalties. But the scoring doesn't actually take place until the middle of the second period, where Brock Besser on the power play 
Pats in a rebound after Petey takes a one-timer off of a pass from Hughes. Besser second goal of the playoffs, Petey and Hughes with the assist. That's both their second assist of the playoffs as well. And Brock looks to the heavens on the bench, thanks his lucky stars, and pays tribute to Ty Alia, who passed away in a car accident six years ago while Brock Besser was playing in the Ivan Holenka overseas. So there's definitely a lot of meaning to the goal that he scored there. And it's ultimately the one that puts Vancouver up 1-0. Spoiler alert, it's the game winner. And in the third period, we see ourselves a little bit more penalty action. We already talked about all that stuff. Kevin Fiel is in the box. Tyler Myers is in the box. We see some really weak calls on guys like Jay Beagle, etc. But ultimately, it's Antoine Roussel, who I was really, really kind of harping on because of that goalie interference penalty earlier, who sees a puck that's open at center ice. He sees the Minnesota player trying to go after it, and he notices that the Minnesota player is kind of slow. So what does he do? He turns on the rocket jets. He comes all the way straight down, picks the puck up, comes in towards the goal on a breakaway, and oh my goodness, Antoine Roussel just scored a breakaway goal. He just redeemed himself there. He just absolutely redeemed verbatim himself there, and I'm gonna see myself out. But Antoine Roussel gets a goal assisted by Hughes and Tanev, and that comes two minutes into the third period. It's 2-0 Vancouver. At this point, the Wild are 0 for, like, what, 4 or 5 or something on their power plays? So it's not looking all too great for the Wild. Eventually, there are more power plays that they end up not scoring on. And eventually, it's a power play goal from the Canucks by Elias Pettersson, his first of the playoffs, assisted by Hughes and Besser. Quinn Hughes literally had a point on every single Canucks goal today. He's at four points in the postseason. My goodness, this guy saw the Calder race and he was like, yeah, you know, Kubalik's getting some points. I'm going to start getting some points too, eh? How you like that? Bada bing, bada boom, boom, boom. Eventually, Markstrom stands on his head. The whole game for Markstrom was really, really solid. He was seeing pucks through. He had a little bit of luck with a few shots getting blocked by Canucks in front. And eventually, there were some pucks that got loose in the crease that were either saved by Tanev, almost crossing the goal line, or just hanging out there in the blue paint doing nothing and then Markstrom turns around and stops it. In typical Jacob Markstrom fashion, he stops the puck and the Wild can't get one past him. They end off this game with an 0 for 7 rating on the power play. My goodness. The Wild were upset with their power play performance from Game 2, and I saw Wild fans everywhere on Twitter and Reddit and in my comments section talking about how they were also upset with their power play performance. But man, they're not gonna like this one. As for the Vancouver Canucks, though, they were 2-for-7 on the power play, so it's not like the penalties were only going Vancouver's way. There were penalties on both sides. The refs were really, really harsh. Some of the calls were really weak, in my opinion, and I was like, okay, if that's, like, normal playoff hockey, quote-unquote, that's not a penalty. But regardless, sure, the Canucks, you could say that they need to be disciplined a lot more. You can say that they need to capitalize on their power plays a lot more. At the end of the day, they won, and it's feeling really good heading into Game 4, which is going to be tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., but I will say that even though they did win, those concerns on the power play still do somewhat haunt me. Some people were saying in the previous video, yo, you're too negative. They won. Come on, just be happy. But like, you know, it doesn't feel good seeing a 2 for 7 out there when you know this team had 14 minutes of 5 on 4 time to convert. They only got 2 goals. So in my opinion, if there's a game to come alive and absolutely take over the man advantage, it's next game. Tighten down your discipline. Even the most lenient open active sticks can lead to a penalty these days. We saw that with the Jake Vertanen trip that was like in the middle of the third period there. But the bottom line is, Kevin Fiala was held off the board, the guy got frustrated as the game went on, he took a penalty with like two minutes left, which led to the Pedersen goal, which is what cemented the Canucks' fate. Three, nothing in this game, and now with a 2-1 series lead, they need one more win to come in. And to those of you who are saying, oh, but Minnesota could get Lafreniere, I've been saying this the entire time, I don't care. I don't care if Minnesota gets Lafreniere, because that's a team that, in my opinion, could honestly kind of use them. They've got some really good prospects in Boldy, Kaprizov, Beckman, Hovanov, etc. But, you know, this is a team that hasn't been super amazing pretty much ever. So why not give them a star? 
But, of course, we're getting ahead of ourselves. The Canucks still have to find themselves a way to win in Game 4. Hopefully, we don't see the Vancouver Canucks from Game 1 come out. Maybe, since the Minnesota Wild want to win this game, and they need to, we're going to see the best out of the Wild. And the Canucks are going to need to match that, and that's pretty much the bottom line about it. But at the end of the day, this day at least, the Canucks still won 3-0. I hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to me in the comments below what you thought about this game. Social that is host 99. And bye.